Okay, this is a training video to show how to use the WP Add Pro system, how to install it, activate it, and then go in and configure it. So basically the first thing you'll need to do is you'll need to actually go purchase the plugin over at over at Invanto or Code Canyon and you can find it over there. There's a link in the show notes for this. Um, it's $28, relatively reasonably priced plugin. Uh, works very well, well worth the money. So once you've purchased it, then what you need to do is you'll need to install it on your site. You'll download the plugin, you'll have to unzip the file that's come in, and go into your WordPress database, and under Add New, click the Add New button for it. It'll take you to where you can add new plugins to your site, and you're going to upload this plugin from wherever you downloaded it to. And what you'll do is you'll click Browse, take it to the directory that you've downloaded it to and you'll find a folder for WP Pro Add System zipped up just upload that zip file it takes just a moment to get it uploaded and zipped or unzipped into your site and installed very easy straightforward process once that's done you can then activate the plugin now they do have several add-ons for this plugin and I have purchased one add-on in particular for it and that add-on is to allow people to purchase the ads directly on your website. So what we're going to do is we're going to go add that plugin now. So we'll go back into Add New, Upload Plugin, go click Browse. Hopefully you've put it in the same area that you downloaded the other, and I uh, downloaded the Add, Buy, and Sell ads. Upload the zip file. Again, takes just a moment or two for it to upload and unzip. Activate that so you have that active. Now again, just for a brief overview, there are several add-ons that you can get for it. They have, uh, where they have, they have, these are all included with it. Where are the add-ons on it? They're all the way down at the bottom. This makes it loads of fun. Here we go. No, oh, we're still not there. There we go. Buy and sell ads. The visual banner ad creator. The WP Pro Geo targeting. To localize your ads. The two most useful ones here is the buy and sell ads and probably the visual ad banner creator. But because I create my ads manually, I won't be using that. But for those of you that don't, this is a great tool to add to this. So once those two things are active, what you'll get is you'll get a new menu in your uh, admin sidebar and that's for advertising. So click on that, go to the dashboard and once you get to the dashboard it'll show you the basic setup of the site. Your statistics, the buy and sell ads one that's on here, manage posted ads, manual updates, general settings for it. So usually when I get a plugin first thing I deal with is the general settings. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go through and make sure the default settings are the things we want. The enable admin bar, yes. Uninstall option. If you think you're going to uninstall this, you'll want to change that to yes because it'll remove all the data from your database at the same time. Enable clean permalinks. Now this is an option the first time I set this plugin up I thought would be very useful. But what it turned out with the way the site was set up that the ads wouldn't display properly on the website I had set this up on previously. So you'll want to experiment with it. You can try with a yes, but I'm going to stick with no because I've already had problems and this website we're setting the plugin up on now is currently similar to the site I had problems with. So leave that one as a no. Um, enable statistics, yes. Enable user data stats, yes. Save impressions for unique impressions or all impressions. Now, unique impressions, of course, means unique to the visitor of the website. All impressions means if one visitor ten, visits 10 pages and loads the ad 10 times, you get all those 10 impressions. I want those. And the same with clicks. I want all clicks, not just unique clicks. And styling, you can do some custom CSS to custom style the ads for the plugin. You may or may not have to do this. I had to do this previously to add some padding to the top of the ad for where I was displaying it. But again, it's just some experimentation to see what's going to work best for you. 
Okay, so once you've saved that, you come back to the default area. Now there is a organization you gotta go through for creating an ad on your website. The first thing you have to do is you have to create an advertiser. So we go in, we create an advertiser for it. And of course we have none, so we go to add a new advertiser. And this takes just a moment to fill out. We've got the basic information, we need the ad of it, advertiser's name. Okay. Subtitle, not necessary because this is a, what they use is they use custom post types for creating everything here. So you get some of the benefits of all your additional add-ons you have into your website. And subtitle is one of them that I have here. Advertiser's email, must put an email in here of some sort so that it gets emailed, they get emailed information. Uh, the WordPress Yoast, if you've got Yoast plugin, this will appear not needed because these are not displayed as individual pages on your site. Um, the same with layered pop-ups not displayed, podcast episodes not displayed, contextual, so there's really nothing else in this one that I'll use. So we'll hit publish on it. Okay, once it's published, You've got your advertiser, you can go back to the dashboard if you want, or pick the menu down the side and, ma and work your way through it. Now, the important thing about ads is before you can place an ad, you must have an ad zone and a campaign. An ad zone needs to come before the campaign because ad zones are created, they're zones on your site where you're going to place the ad, such as, as this plugin is going to be replacing the current advertising plugin we have on the WP Plugins A to Z website. And you'll see right now we have an ad zone right up at the top of the page. In the top header, we also have an ad zone down here on the side of the page. Okay, so that's two ad zones that I have. I'm only going to create one ad zone for the benefit of this presentation. And the one I'm going to create is the one at the top of the page here. So you go in create your ad zone and that's a 728 by 90 banner ad that runs at the top. So we'll create the ad zone, add new ad zone and to make it simple so you can track it later 728 by 90 top of page. Makes it easier. Now the nice thing about this ad zone is you can apply with this plugin here you can apply different ad sizes for the different devices out there. This might be an experimentation you would try. Maybe you want a bigger ad or a smaller ad to appear in different devices like a tablet or a cell phone. What we're going to do here is we're going to use the same one across all of them. And they've got it all built in here, 468, 120, skyscrapers, rectangles, buttons, custom, full width, all kinds of banner ads in here. This plugin allows you to create numerous types of ads. We're just going to go with the simpler ad here, and 728 by 90. Fix sizes, it'll always keep its size no matter if the banners are larger or smaller. Variable. What this allows you to do is if you have a 728 by 90 block and say you upload an ad that is say 750 by 60, that ad will stay that size or the ad zone will adapt itself. The ad zone will shrink down to that site, the size and height of the banner. Okay, If you leave it at fixed, the ad will will hit the space, but there'll be space around the ad. So this is kind of... Uh, depends on how you do your ads. If you make sure you always put the right ads up there, you'll never have a problem. So because this also has because this also has a responsive built in, responsiveness built into it, if you assign the banner size the same across tablets and phones, then what will happen is that banner will automatically responsively resize down to fit the device that it's on. Okay, and the ad zone description top of page and you can give this a very full robust description because this information is also used in the buy and sell which we're not going to be setting up in this presentation but we'll have another presentation for. The max number of banners to put into this. We have a max banners that we put up into the top of five and rotate the banners yes. When you rotate the banners what will happen is as somebody sits on the page it will automatically slide in a new banner 
every so often. You can have slider or show off. Show off is new with the latest uh, update. So let's see what it does. Rotation time, we'll make it eight seconds. So every eight seconds that ad will change. The rotation effect, you can have it fade, slide, or vertical. Fade's kind of nice. Okay, AV grid. What's this for? What this is for is that if you want to have more than one ad appear, you can show multiple ads and you can set this to have two by two or two horizontal ads, stack them on top of each other. Or if this, say this was 125 by 125 blocks and you wanted to put four of them, you would make it two by two. And that would make two columns, two, uh, two rows. So this is something you experiment with when you know you're going to present more than one ad at a time. Center the ad zone. I always like to have it centered. And hide the ad zone if it's empty. This is kind of useful in that if you have ads that are expired and it was the last ad on your site, instead of having a blank space there, the ad zone will just disappear and not appear until a new ad is placed in there. And that's pretty much all the settings. All the rest of this stuff is all the add-ons for my site. Although we get down to the bottom, we have the buy and sell ad zone options. You can make them pay-per-click, pay-per-view, pay-per-duration. And of course, what that is, is every time someone clicks on an ad, they pay for it. Every time they, they uh, view the ad, they pay for it. So they can pay for impressions or they can pay for time. We're not going to set this up at the moment because we have to set up the rest of it. So we'll leave that. So this is the ad zone created. So once you publish it, that's all you need there. So as we said, we need ad zones, then we need campaigns, and then we need banner ads. So let's go into campaigns next and create a campaign for it. And the campaigns, uh, what they're for is to set up space for the ad to run. And this will allow you to connect it to an advertiser, select a period that the ad's going to run, and you can do this in multiple ways. It helps, it helps you set up multiple ads into one campaign. Say one advertiser is going to run multiple ads and you can then apply those ads into the campaign. And instead of having to set up the, or the ad period expiration, they can set up the campaign period expiration. There's multiple ways to interact this. So at any rate, what we're going to do with this one here is we're just going to call this campaign one as a sample camping. Hey, that's even better than campaign. C-M-P-A-I-N-G. There we go. Still got it wrong. There we go. Campaign. Okay, so we got that. Select an advertiser. We select the advertiser we created earlier. Select a start date, which would be now, and then we select an end date. We'll just run it out to something experimental. And again, very little to do down in the bottom. And that's all there is for it. So we publish the campaign. So once the campaign is published, now you need to create your banner ad. So go create a banner. Add new banner. Banner one, select the advertiser, absolute must. Link, where are we gonna link this to? We're gonna link this one back to my website as a sample. Target, load a new window. Status, we'll make it active. So we go down to the bottom to select a banner type. Now we're gonna upload the banner to make life easy here. Okay, so uploading the banner here is a relatively straightforward process, just like uploading any other media into WordPress. Uh, you click on the upload banner, it takes you to the media library. I've already pre-uploaded a couple of banners, one with a clear background, one with a white background. We'll choose the one with the white background. We'll click insert in the post so it puts the banner in there for us, gives you an idea of what it's going to look like. You could also, you wanted to put in AdSense, iframes, text, ads, you can put in just HTML code if you wanted. And again, you can do the same thing for all of the devices. So what we'll do with it is we'll put the same banner ad into all three devices. Only takes a moment. Okay. 
So we go down. If you had the Visual Banner Ad Creator, the complete version, you could go create your Visual Banner Ad in here. Export the banner as a PNG, save it as your file, edit elements, add image, add objects, add text. You can pretty much have a heyday if you get the Visual Ad, ad Creator that is the add-on. Okay, link banner to the ad zone. Now you have to save it first. So what I do is go up here and save the draft. Got to get it all saved and updated first. And for some reason it lost the campaign we selected earlier. Try that again. Save draft. This is why you got to have your campaign and your advertiser first, along with your zone. Okay, so we got that. So now we can come back down to the bottom. Okay, link banner to the ad zone. We're going to link it to the 728 ad zone. Okay, optional settings. We want it set as no follow for any links in it. The, the option for transition duration is defaulted. Flash fallback image. If you uploaded a flash banner, you can have an image that will fall back to when someone's using a device that doesn't support flash, so it's, such as any mobile device operated under the Apple iOS. Contract. You can create some contract types if you want. Pay-per-click, duration, you can leave it blank and just let the ad run forever. Duration is what I often leave. Amount of days, you can have it in here for whatever number of days you want. Okay, and that's all you've got for that. Once that's done, everything's set, you hit publish, and your ad's created. So that's the creation of the ads, the zones, the campaigns, the advertisers, all of that. Now, what you need to do is get that ad to display on your website. How do you go about doing that? Well, there's a couple of ways to deal with it. The first of which is to use widgets, but we'll get to that in just a moment. The other one is to use a shortcode. And we just got to find where the shortcodes are located, and I believe that's located in here. Oh, my mistake. It's actually in the Add Zone. So what you have to do is you have to go to the Add Zone get the add zone list and once you're up in here you can go over here to where it's get add zone code get the code and it gives you the short codes you can use a template tag you can use or an iframe tag you can use the beauty of the iframe tag is you can stick it on other websites so if you wanted to set this up on one website to manage all of your ads you could do just that and then just give out the ad iframe tag for the ad zone. Right? Create an ad zone specific to a website and its location. And all ads placed in it will go to that website and its, that location. So it's very useful. We're using it strictly on this site at the moment. So what we're going to do to display that ad is then we go to Appearance, Widgets, Okay, and we're going to put it in the header right. We're going to kind of break our theme for a minute, but we're going to use the display your ads because we're not going to get rid of the old ad yet. Okay, select the ad zone. It's only got one ad zone to choose from. Hit save. And now when you hit refresh the page, we'll have two ads showing up there at the top. I'll be cleaning this up later, but in the meantime, there it is. See? Beauty. Works like a hot damn. That is setting up the WP Pro Ad Manager plugin for your website. Check it out. Enjoy. Please use the affiliate link that I have provided if you are new to Code Canyon to buy this. I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you very much. Take care now. Bye-bye.